Okay guys, so in this video we're checking out the G-Lang Wasp 85X. This is an 85mm micro with 2 inch propellers. Uh, these are the HQ 2x2.5x3s. We got the G-Lang 1202 8700kV motors. This is meant to run on 2S only. Uh, the board on there only has 5 amp um, BL Heli S ESCs and it only runs up to 2S. You have a battery connector back here and a uh, basically two 1S battery set up here with the PH2 connector and folded pins. We'll talk about that here in a little bit later. Um, power switch will VTX 25 to 200 milliwatts. Comes with a FreeSky D8 receiver here. This one isn't so great and I'll talk about that later but it does come with other receiver options like the AC900 and FreeSky XM Plus, Crossfire, etc. A whole bunch of available Spectrum and FlySky as well. Got this new camera on here. It looks like it's got some sort of a 3D printed adapter. Um, pretty wide field of view. And I didn't pretty, did not really like the fisheye on this one. I'll talk about that some more a little bit later. Uh, standard G Lane canopy here that holds uh, micro and nano cameras. The Bottom plate here is two and a half millimeters thick, 85 millimeters motor to motor, and obviously holds a standard whip style board with a USB port coming out of the bottom. Now uh, the battery holder that's on here is uh, basically for two 1S batteries, as you can see right here. These are the two 1S batteries that are included, 300 milliamp hour, high volts. You get a bunch of um, other stuff in the case. Um, you get your standard G Ling. Nice case here. You get a clear uh, canopy if you break the black one. You get some stickers if you want to replace those stickers. You get this other battery in here which I didn't use which comes pre-heat shrink here. It's connected together like this. And you get a spare set of props as well as this extra battery holder. I think it's meant to hold the configuration we have the two 1S batteries. So you guys like this, I didn't test this configuration. Obviously it won't make much of a difference compared to just using the two standard batteries here. And I did also try the uh, GMB batteries as well. Um, these are a little bit better, uh, but I'll talk about that here in a second. And lastly, you, you get this uh, charging adapter that basically takes your two 1S batteries and you can connect this to a hobby grade charger and it will look like a 2S LiPo with this adapter. Alright, so this is how much it weighs without the batteries, and it's coming at 43 grams. And with the two 1S LiPos, coming in at 59 and a half grams. Okay, so if you guys haven't already figured it out yet, it's pretty clear where they're going with this design. They're trying to compete with the Emacs Tiny Hawk Race 2. This is obviously a stretch X um, frame, it's a little bit different, but very similar characteristics, uh, two inch props, and uh, you obviously got your all in one board. Uh, this one has the built in VTX as a separate VTX, but this one actually weighs a little bit more. I think it's like 46 grams, I believe. Now, I thought it would be lighter, but it's actually a little bit heavier. So, coming in at 46.6 grams versus 43 grams. Um, and they're using bigger batteries in this one, the ones that go sideways on here, the two uh, 1S 450s. And I think that that's the better approach for this. Um, I'm thinking that these 1202 motors, uh, uh, what is this KV? It's pretty high. It's um, 8700 KV. It draws a lot of current, and these little 1S batteries just are not able to handle it and you get massive voltage sag. Even on these higher quality GMBs you get a lot of voltage sag. And this comes out very clearly when you're flying this around trying to do full throttle punch outs. You do get a uh, you know like this quick burst of of speed but then it quickly dies off because of the voltage sag. So yeah you're gonna get if you want more performance you're gonna have to go heavier with the two I think you're gonna have to get two four fifty when I slide those, I'm going to try that a little bit later and also try changing the connector. Um, these folded pin connectors are notorious for just having a lot of voltage sag because of the higher resistance and the, versus the solid pin connectors on the Tiny Hawk Race 2. 
So that makes a big difference as well. So if you're going to get this, if you like the looks of this and you want this, oh, you're going to have to modify this. I'll have this, I'll probably do that in another video, not this one. Um, either you have to change these solid pin or the folded pin connectors to solid pin connectors if you want to go with two 1S batteries like on the Tiny Hawk. Or what I would actually recommend doing is swapping that battery connector for the other one and using a um, 2S450 battery and then changing this connector to an XD30. That would probably be the best um, in terms of getting you the best performance and obviously if you're going to be swapping the battery connector here or the battery holder maybe going sideways with the batteries as well would help with flight characteristics. I'm going to investigate that for a future video. I'm not going to obviously show that in this one. I just wanted to show you the out of the box performance and yeah it's um yeah the, the voltage lag is the thing that really kills the performance on this one. Otherwise, you know, the tune is fine, the design's fine, I, I'm not particularly fond of the camera. Of course, that's totally um, subjective. Some people like a lot of fisheye, I don't particularly like that. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the all-in-one board seems okay. Obviously, this is 2S only for a 2-inch setup here. It's not really a speed demon, but the it could be better with... Um, a different setup in terms of the uh, batteries. I think the batteries and the way that the battery connectors are set up here are just too small and too much um, in resistance so that you have a lot of voltage stacks. That really makes the performance uh, not that impressive on this particular model. I think it could be better with some modifications and I'm going to do that in a future video and come back with that. But for this one I'll show you a couple flights I did with the stock batteries from G-Lang and another flight on the uh, GMB batteries. You'll see that the batteries don't matter all that much in terms of the voltage taking a little bit less than the GMBs, but it still kills the performance because there's so much voltage lag on this power setup. So I really recommend going to the XD30 and a 2S450 for this one. I think, pretty sure that's going to be a lot better. We'll see in, in the next video on this one, but for now, these are two flights. Uh, link down in the description if you want to check it out, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. All right, so pretty quiet. Not really doing much with this camera is got a lot of fish eye. Yeah, look at look at all that lens distortion. It's pretty crazy. But the tune sounds all right. It's just to us. A bit of a flutter there. Wind's starting to pick up. It's so quiet. Yeah, it's got kind of floaty. Decent speed. Tracks pretty good. You don't hear any major tuning problems. It does take a little effort to turn it. Oh, the wind's starting to pick up. I'm not sure if you guys can see that in the video. It's fluttering a little bit. But super quiet. And I'm already down to 7 volts. Not sure what the low voltage cutoff is set to, but... Should, oh, no! I got, a, oh, I got a receiver loss. Fail safe right there.
<clears throat> All right, things so small it gets stuck in the grass pretty easily. So the voltage recovered about 7.5, 7.6 volts and right away down to about 6.9. So I'm thinking maximum three minutes of flight time. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm thinking that the voltage is getting so low here that the voltage regulator is causing the receiver to brown out. I don't think it's because of distance. So I'm gonna keep flying this until the voltage reading starts flashing because it should start flashing here depending on how what the low voltage is set to, which I don't know. And low voltage came out of six and a half volts there. And this is with the stock batteries. You'll get better results with the uh, G and Bs, but there's obviously be an extra cost. Getting, okay, now I'm getting into flashing. So it flashes at about six and a half volts. And it can do flips and rolls. Something like this size, not super entertaining. I think it's gonna be more for like racing situations. I'm not sure about this camera though. It's, you can see, but the fish eye is like crazy. All right, so I'm gonna keep going. Six and a half volts, four minutes now, so. I think at the end, but kind of like at this point in the battery, it's not too fun. So I'm thinking three minutes of usable flight time. Yeah, there we go, we'll go ahead and land it. Let's see what it recovers to. Yeah, it's recovering back up to 7.1, so like three and a half uh, volts per cell. So yeah, about three minutes of fun flight time and about four minutes of usable flight time. Okay, so I'm flying with the uh, GNB 300s now. So it's gonna give you a little bit more power if you wanna do more acro. Yeah, this uh, field of view in the camera is really wonky. Not sure if I like it or not. So these GMBs are going to give you a little bit more punch, a little bit more power. If that's what you're looking for for more acro. But again, you know, this is these are two-inch props. So at the end of the day, it is what it is, and it is very windy right now. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that in the audio feed or not. It might be coming out in the microphone. But yeah, even with these GNBs, it's getting a low, low battery warning. So you get a fair amount of voltage sag here. But it seems like it has a little bit less. But when you're going full throttle on these, even on the GNBs, you, know, you can see it's going down to about six volts, below six volts even. So I'm not sure if this motor KV is the right one. I think this one was on the uh, Anger 75X, I think. The same motor. It does seem to draw more amps than you would expect for a motor of this size. But the tune seems all right. It's just that it's very windy 
see right now. Oh, it's just it all over the place. I'm sure you can hear the wind now. It's blowing good. And now that I'm pushing it a little bit more, we're getting a low battery warning already, so yeah, I'm not sure if these are that much better. They're a little bit better these batteries than these stocks, but hmm, seems like if I'm pushing it, doing a lot of full throttle, this seems to drain the battery quite a bit. Just kind of cruising around, the voltage does recover. That's still pretty low, about three minutes. And at this point, with the voltage sags, down to below seven volts, it doesn't seem to have a lot of oomph, not, a lot, not much get go. Yeah, it just does not want to really move too well. I mean, it moves, but it feels more like a whoop now. So, just to give you guys a little bit different feel for with a different battery, but it doesn't seem to be all that much better.